And our uh, first power will come through all the way from uh, uh, Port Macquarie. Wrong. Wrong. And the, the, uh, the draw was done properly. The draw, we redone the draw and the draw, whatever's uh, the numbers we done the draw, we need to pull out of that. Where are you, Rob? Yeah. Oh, you're the boss, are you? Good on you, mate. All the way from Port Macquarie. Port Macquarie. Now, do you, want this, do you want this in the stand or do you hang on to it? I'm not Well, why we'll get this out of your way, mate. Why you going, Rob? Uh, this is one called Don't Do Drugs. Sex and drugs and rock and roll is a common way to soothe your soul. Let me tell you now, you take its toll and you will end up with a hole in your soul. Getting in the zone, laying down a poem about heroin, methadone about smack and crack and stuff like that that'll take your life and not give back. Are you shooting up? Are you getting stuffed up? Have you got depression? A psychotic obsession? Now, if you're doing lines and pulling cones, the place for you in Narconon. Ice, ice, it's dangerous. Think twice. That instant feel good will entice you. Roll the dice and lose your life. Through lows and highs, you polarize. No alibis for your demise. When you can't eat and you can't sleep, now's the time. Detoxify, stimulate, hallucinate, then watch your life deteriorate. It gratifies and falsifies and compromises, destabilizes, stigmatizes and terrifies like when you're being circumcised. And if you got a penis, the chances are you won't be kissed. Your heart beats last and it won't fast, but it won't last. You're just a figment of the past. Have you fallen for them using tricks like guns to pop in Buddhism? Roach and spliffs and Billy Bones and your life is turning out all wrong. Are you all is up? Are you coming down? And did you call your mum's ring when you went to town? Did you, did you call your mum's ring when you get to town? You said, oh, no, no, no. Now I have lost my way and that's sort of just the way it is. Uh, <laughs> did you call your mum's ring when you went to town? Is it alcohol and drug YouTube? Do your wife and kids go on too much booze? Now the dealer. Go, yicky, 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 go, Behind the eight ball, the path of the dark side. If you go there, chances are that is where you're going to stay. And a little quickie. Sun's up, sun's down, sun's all around. It's always there, let's make a sound. Just beam and raise, bring joy to my days. I've got nothing but praise because you're always a mess. There's a thousand ways you got to clear my haze. And I love it so much, it's fast becoming a craze. As we lie on the beach for days and days, soaking up the serenity as you're beaming them rays. Thank you. Did he say? <laughs> How's that? That could go on any stage. He can stand up on stage. Yeah, we'll put his name down and we might put him up again. No, these people don't want it. Well, they can have an ear off. Right, who have we got next on? Uh, number two. Number two, Dorsey from the Sunshine Coast. Dorsey, hello, oh, here's me, your lady friend. You're right. you're all the way down from the Sunshine Coast. Where'd you get all that gear from? It looks pretty good. <laughs> Good morning everybody. Well, I've got to build my confidence up. I was here last year and I often think there should be more women standing up and reading poems, poetry and I travel around like I meet Ray and Dave at different country music venues. So I thought, well, and I've met Tony here last year and he's been writing poetry, so, but today I decided I'll touch more on, um, like, dementia as a poem because so many people are reflected by it and I've just had a dear girlfriend as I was coming down here, so I just felt I'll do one on dementia. I had a friend, where did she go? Out into the over. Nobody knows. She lives somewhere else now, in her own mind. 
although she's still here. She's left so much behind. We used to be buddies. We used to be friends. We've had similar interests, but now that all ends. She's gone off on a tangent, far from my path. I can't even follow. She lives in the past. What do I do now? She hasn't been bad. I can't simply dump her. I'm all that she has. We're not the same people and I've left so much left. How do I go on while she drifts away? What do I do with a friend that I have loved for many years? She is still here, but she's somebody else. It hurts just to write this when the love is still there. And as I go back to the Sunshine Coast tomorrow, I, when I stayed with her coming down, I've just heard she's now going into a dementia ward. So I feel this is why this was close to me today. Thank you very much. Very, very good. Yeah, you got that, Tom. Pick that piece of paper up down there, mate. Ray, can I just say, we're going to have five winners today. Yes. We're taking through five winners to Friday, Australia Day. So, one yep. Judges, be aware that top, your top five is what we're looking for. Right up. Right up. Let's get on to the next one. Number, we're up to number three. Lance. Lance. Uh, uh, here I am. Pine Creek. <laughs> here we go. all the way down from Pine Creek. And he was on Macron Sunday morning. I, I was listening to Lance and he was on Macron Sunday morning. So it's welcome to the... Uh, uh, I didn't get a chance to do a poem, but... No. Right, hey, you got your chance today, Copper. Where you go. Wait on we get it on him under that. Yeah, she can hang on. Be careful. Right, wait till I get out of your way. Um, when does the timing start? Right. Um, um, from the age of 11 to 17, uh, I done a lot of horse work. And I was a good enough horseman in 1966 to do a season in a stock camp on Victoria River Downs. And when I wrote this poem, the working title was All in a Day's Work, 17 Years After. In my book, it's 25 years after. Today, presenting it to you, it's all on a day's work, 57 years after. I took a job once. I was a bit of a lad. On a pastoral lease immense. The horse was bad and the cattle mad and a man skilled, his only defence. Against being killed or sorely made, just doing a normal day's toil. For ladies meager. But I was young, eager, and to the horse and saddle, loyal. We rode at daylight one dry season day with 200 coaches in hand, 15 men arrayed around us on the horses with bull's head brand. We blocked them up on a wide open plain, five miles from a steep sided plateau. Four men stayed behind, the coaches to mine, the rest rode out with me in tow. We circled round to the other side, led our horses up the steep slope, mounted again up on the high plain, then fanned out of a steady lope. Scrub was as thick as fleas up there, so the way we wanted to go. 500 beasts, 50 bullocks at least, headed for the white coaches below. I steadied my horse at the plateau rip, let him have his head again, made it down to level ground, and doubled him up with a red-eyed brain. A mile or more, the lead away, I the first to the plain took below. They started to swing me closest to bring them to the line they were supposed to go. Black soil plain, cracked and dry as black soil plains can be, but I urged full pace in a headlong race as though the muster depended on me. Head stock went a hundred yards behind Yanny fast and already made the lead his place. I felt no disgrace. His horse faster than mine that day. He hit the lead beast the shoulder blade and pushed it back on line. I took the next and tried to exit and with a drop of a whip wheel of mine. With a native stockman backing me up, we slowly walked the lead around. The coaches still lay a mile around across the scarred and broken ground. As leaders, well, they hit the mob and kept on to the other side where four fresh men waited in anticipation the chance of a lively ride. Now, it's always the biggest, strongest beasts that make up the lead in a run. The sort that pay our station's way and 
Sometimes they'd throw him one by one. I tailed two on that day as they broke from the coach and mob, tied them quick with bull straps thick, dip their horns with a saw for the job. Let them up and retrieve my straps, now his coach had been held around, and with 15 men to block them in, should they try for open ground. You can always pick a pike of beast, the ones that won't settle in, heads held high with a roving eye, yaks in the riders, feed them to them. But we held them, settled them down, and then relay rode to dinner camp, caught pot of tea, beef and damper soggy, a fresh horse from the tailor's plant. In an hour we started up the mob, horse tailor fading from gear, and knocked up nags, mules with back bags, still ten miles to the yards to do, to wick them to cross in between and a mile of cane grass swamp, while pikers kept knit for a chance to flick, and no man needing the boss to front, to shoulder them back into the mob or down them for the tail if need, and I was there to get my share of that pike and scrubber breed. Men in the lead to hold them back, which cracking to keep up the tail. Men on the wing to hold them in. A dust cloud marking our trail. And a whispering sun urging us on, or lose them for the want of light. Fifteen men of the mobile pen couldn't hold this lot at night. We lost a few at the riverside. They beat us in a tea tree stand. None could stay or block their way, and we cursed their loss to a man. But at last the yards. We bowled them then in the wings of a stockyard V. Too late now, Baron Cow. You're booked on a one-time taxi. Sundown as we close the yard gate that our second horse goes for the day. Saddles on rails, bridles on nails, cook's fire flickering across the way. I slept that night to sleep with the bed in my pack of swag so thin I was so beat didn't bother to eat. Needing more the sleep I'd get in. On the morrow we'd draft them up, get the coaches out to feed, bullets to chuck them with a bit of luck, a chance to watch my clothes and me. Clean skips the brand mini wolves to cut, my saddle's in need of a stitch. Nail or two with my horse's shoes and rails to mend with a cob and coat twitch. And there never was a more thankless job, paying a pittance for seven days hard. But I have no regret, as I recollect, mustering VRD scrubbers to the yards. How good was that, ladies and gentlemen? All the way from the Northern Circus. Yep, they're trying to find one of the lands to see who's over there. Yeah, that was beautiful. Okay. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, the poets, poets of Australia today, it's great to see them coming from all over the country because they write about their area or their. Uh, the problems around that area and the, and the, the bush poetry of today is still as strong as ever. Right, who have we got next? Number three, we are to number four. Young Terry. Young Terry? Dick, well, is, what's that? Dick, Burnside, oh, well, anyway, Terry. Terry from Burnside. Where are you, Cobb? Yeah. You're right. Just take your time, you're gonna you're gonna read it the way. Okay. Yeah, you know, wait on me. Why do we get you If this thing has to be AI, D horned or D6, I know how to do it. <laughs> This is a revenge uh, poem. How they got the good noose from Ghent to Hay. Hay's judge put his cap on, bad Billy must die. For the bad deeds he'd done, in a grave he must lie. The hangman was crying, no words had he spoken. Cause when testing the gallows, the rope it had broken. The word from the warden it bore into our ear. The deed couldn't be done, he made it quite clear. No time to be lost, we must find it quickly. He said, bugger the cost, because the villain was guilty. 
chased with the hardwares all around the nation, Bunnings and Masters, the whole dissertation, hinged on rope one inch hempen in length 30 feet to cheer up the hangman for his work to complete. That rope made of steel, leather and rayon, rope by metres on reels, by the yard and the fathom. But good rope of one inch, length 30 foot hempen, seemed to have vanished despite all those helping. Then at last came a, came a call from a place far away. They had found some old cord from a gent in Bombay. He'd found an old faker who performed in the street. The genuine old fella could the rope trick complete. By a wave of his hand, the rope's end it would rise, with one end of the ground for the stair to the sky. Old man in scant vesture, he would climb to the top. After making more gestures, disappeared with a pop. The, the rope tumbled down till it lay on the street. With no one around, they grabbed it up quick. It was hemp, one inch thick. Perfect, they mentioned. They had sent it off quick to fulfill its intention. The villain's life ended by the cord slickly sent, by his neck suspended by the good noose from Jet. Shortly thereafter, the old faker was dead. Cop said in a letter that he fell on his head, because somebody pinched evidence they mentioned, some rope of one inch, length, 30 foot, hempen. This is a thing for old, old fellows like me. I've called myself old. Photos. They sit upon my walls in shades of black and white, filling frames both wide and tall, time captured in full flight. Most show us smiley faces, show those we hold most dear, in many far off places when our memories were so clear. The powers of the human mind assembles those tones of grey, forgotten memories there to find about those long lost days when someone got his camera out and told us all to smile, just just here or thereabout, just how it'd be just a while. Joe would cough, Sam would blink, some would scratch their noses. The while became an hour, I think, as we struck a dozen poses. At long last came the final click and the blinding camera flash. Then the cunning chemical trick as we paid for it in cash. When a dozen years are passed, or maybe just three score, we can gaze upon that scene at last to wonder just once more. Who the heck is that upon my left? I used to know his name. Cause our memories leave us all bereft. I bet he thinks the same. Who was it had a motorbike that gave him many scars? Who was the bugger on the right who said we'd land on Mars? Who was the guy with fart so foul who had the dreaded behind? Who could make us all choke and fall as he tried fresh air to find? Where was this place behind our ears? In focus, soft and blurry. Was it a place of joyful tears? or thunder, flame and fury. So take this warning, one and all, and go pick up a pen. Write in the names you can recall, while it is still fresh and plain. Mark in the date and tell us where, while it is still brand new. So it is all still written there, but we no longer have a clue. Well done, Terry. Very good. Now, this uh, mic, mate, come up in, and it's too loud. We've got to sort all these problems out. It's like getting out of bed of the morning, you've got to milk 80 cows and something's gone wrong. You've got to just sort it out. <laughs> Young Terry, yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're up to number five now. That's good. Yeah. We're up to five, you can turn. Yeah, that's okay, mate. Oh, well, you're up here already, Young Terry. <laughs> Les, sorry. Yeah, Les, number five. Yes, Les. Still too loud. Still too loud, Tom. Get back here. Yeah, you can do anything you want, mate. You're, you've got the stage when uh, you're going to hand the mic and you're going to put that in there, right? Yeah, that's right. Just come to me then for each of them, mate. Great. Statistic, great land under. Great land under, starkness of fire, its heat of oddy bushfire, surviving, struggling, hopes, desire. The vision of the imprint impacting out back to mind, fellowship and mateship, rendering commitment to kind. Past the survival to attain, 
It's the expression in Aussie folklore, country ballads and poetic fame. Join golden guitar and fiddle's heart, our voice to sing, to swell. We lift country tempos in nature's force to yell. It's the triumph of this nation overcoming nature's assault upon us all. It's the music of many generations in country state stand tall. Hero musicians gladly and songs the spirit soar. It's the vitality of this nation, country of Australians in Machin, forever, forevermore. Thank you. David Melville. Come on, David. <laughs> David's been doing a good job on the on the table of the morning. Thanks for doing that job, David. Now, am I gonna no, take that? I'm gonna take that. What do you want to do with it? No, no, no. Right, away you go, mate. I really shouldn't be here, you know, I haven't been well. Mark. Not very well at all. I've had my heart broken. Oh. 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 You're gonna make me cry. Oh, no, mate. Sorry. Anyway, I went and said to help with it, and uh, they said, look, Dave, the best thing you can do with a heartbroken heart is to put it down into a poem and get it out there in front of people. So I've written this poem, and I'm getting it out. You're the people I'm getting it out in front of. <laughs> It's an Australian poem, got everything in it, love, loss, the whole thing. So here we go. Oh, something awful's happened. Me mate's gone and found himself a shiver. And he's going around acting all strange and peculiar. With his arm around her, he gazes mournfully into her eyes, making a proper drongo of himself, though he's too stupid to realise. When I suggest we go fishing, he's going out with her, probably doing that kiss. And when I say, hey, come on, come on, come on, we're going in a few beers, he's going to the pictures with her. It'd bring a drongo to tears. Boy, the other day I saw him at Woolworths. It was, he was holding her hand, holding her hand in public. I just do not understand. When he said he was looking, you know, I thought he meant for a dog something we could take fishing with us around on the ground, but a sheila, a sheila, what are we going to do with one of them? She's got him by the old fella. <laughs> I hardly get to see him now and again. Oh, we used to go fishing and drinking every day. Take a look at those two blokes, good mates, that's what they'd say. We get all dolled up in our t-shirts and our boxer shorts and our thongs looking brand new. Now she's got him in those torn jeans, fancy shirt, sporting the comb over it. Oh, we used to stagger out of the pub legless together, singing and dancing the occasional spew, but we never thought not ever. Oh, you just don't know how miserable it is fishing and drinking by yourself. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't mind it so much if I thought my mate was enjoying himself. But he's got all serious like, you know, you, you hardly ever see him smile. I reckon it's all that kissing and cuddling. I suppose get sick of that after a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but she'll come good. Those love affairs, they never last. She'll get sick and tired of scratching his bum and passing wind. That's my forecast. Hey, hey, don't you just go thinking that I'm a whinger or I'm jealous or I got that, that homosexual tendency. Because you should be wrong. It's just that every time I find a new mate, some Sheila comes along and spoils it for me. Oh. Thanks for listening. <laughs>
Give a big hand, folks. Oh, yes. Who's been affected by love? Come on, put your hand up if you've been affected by love in some way. Put your hand up if you've never been affected by love. Put your hand up if you don't understand the question. Huh? <laughs> oh, dear me. Yeah, my... my um, we've got the next one coming up is... No, number, 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 number? Seven. Number seven, Thundercloud. And while Thundercloud's coming up, my brother, seems a bit strange, but he's sharing a house with his divorced wife and two kids. And he had a girlfriend for a while, and she, she they split. And he's now, he's a great songwriter. He's now written 100 songs about the relationship. 100. So, Bloody hell, so when things are really crook, you become more productive in writing poetry and, and so on. So, anyway, please give a warm welcome to. Thunder Clear! Come on! <laughs> Boom! I'm Thunder Clear, Mum calls me James. Washing away the garbage, leaving rainbows after rains. I've come from Gyra at the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame to listen to these fun linguistic games. The imagery in this one is really awesome. It's the water lily written by Henry Lawson. It was recounted from a dream by a young wife to Henry when he was only well, in 1893. Have a listen and visualise what I'll explain to you. The water lily. A lonely young wife in a dream discerns a lily decked pool with a border of ferns. And a beautiful child with butterfly wings trips down to the edge of the water and sings, come, mama, come, quick, follow me, step out on the leaves of the water lily. And the lonely young wife, her heart beating wild, Cries, wait till I come, till I reach you, my child. But the beautiful child with butterfly wings steps out on the leaves of the lily and sings, Come, mama, come, quick, follow me. Step out on the leaves of the water lily. And the lonely young wife steps out on the stream, but the lily leaves sink and she wakes from a dream. Ah, the waking is sad. For the tears that it brings, as she knows, it's a dead baby's spirit that sings. Come, mother, come, quick, follow me. Step out on the leaves of the water lily. Thank you. Well done, guys. Well, very well done. We're all the way down from Gaira. And of course, we run the state championships up there uh, last year, and it was a wonderful weekend at the uh, at Gyra. It, uh, the watermelon, they just uh, did they, 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 they just finished the festival. Yeah, no, the they? lamb and potato festival's on until the 28th of uh, January, so it runs conju in conjunction. So yeah, we're passing through, yeah. pop in. And, uh, passing through Gyra, we're going and pop into the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame there too. Yep. Yep, yep. We're down to our last one. Tony Casual. Are you there, Tony? Terry. Terry. Terry Casual. There we go. No, it's Tony. <laughs> Come on. I was confused. Tony Casual. I've known him for 40 years, 30 years, all the way from Goodna. I think I can even remember that name. It's great to see you down here, Carl. Right. The only reason I'm here is. How's that, that too long? Can you hear me about the mic? No, I can't. No, I can't. Okay, how's that? That's it, perfect. Right, and the reason I'm here is because I ran in the road the services club yesterday and he said, come down and make up the numbers. Now, can, can we do two if we're under six minutes? You got to be quick. Okay, I'm quick. Okay, grandmothers, grandparents, any here? Nearly. Okay, how do you feel the first, child, first grandchild? <coughs> okay, the birth of a child. How's life rearranged by the birth of a child? Or well, turn a raging bull into a lamb, meek and mild. 
It can bond a family that's falling apart. The birth of a child can mend a broken heart. A baby stops those who felt unwanted from feeling alone. Its infectious smile can crumble the heart of stone. A beaming face says that you're a special one. From this bundle of joy, a ray of new light has begun. That thought important just fades from view. All things stale, replaced by the new. A love abounds from the innocent who charms as to hold a trusting one in your arms. Family and friends can help keep the infant from strife. But only a mother knows the emotions as the scene turns into life. This creation of humanity has all wondering in all, just like you, our precious little gift, the reason we're living for. Yeah, I did that 20 years ago when my first granddaughter was born. Now, I'm, I'm going to do a quick run out. Ray, I'll, I'll be away Friday, so I'll... I'm just making up. I don't care. I, I know you don't care. <laughs> now, I had a bit of a soft spot for Dave and his mate. But I've also got a mate. And it's, uh, I actually wrote this walking through the um, Woodford Festival. I've done a little rap number or something. Someone said, there he is, the rapping cowboy. I think they said rapping. And I walked into a tent. Here's a bloke playing a guitar. I wrote, sat and wrote this called My Dog Blue. I'm a dog, but dig it are true. I have a dog, his name is Blue. Gentle on sheep, deadly on hog. He's a worker, one hell of a dog. He loves a fight, he loves a battle. Protecting his turf, rounding up cattle. Rides on a bike, trots of a horse, part of a team, in charge of course. Always alert, sleeps when he can. Willing to sweat, no flash in the pan. He's my mate, the best you'll get. Against the other, I'm willing to bet. You can have my house, you can have my wife, but I'm telling you, if you love your life, don't touch my dog, don't touch my hat. There'll be a fight, be assured of that. Yeah, I'm a drover, think it are true, and have a dog, his name is Blue. Thank you, Ray. I didn't think you had that, didn't you? <laughs> no? Didn't think you had it in your rapping cowboy. Yeah. Right over. Right. Now, can I just say a little bit more, Ray? Right here, what we need from right. the scholar is five names. Five names. Five names. Make life easier for us, for the collecting. Five names. Pick out your five winners today, or we're going to take you to Friday. Yep. Any copies of the book? 